Alright, so I've got a couple of interesting audio visualizations to show you today. Uh, I'm working on my Natural Instruments PXI chassis, which is running LabVIEW, uh, graphical type of programming language. Um, basically what I'm working on, I've got a couple of displays here that are kind of interesting. This one I designed about a year ago. It's a 16 rows by 16 column display with uh, current limiting LED drivers, an AVR microprocessor, and a, an FTDI USB bridge, um, which allows me to communicate to the processor from the, the larger PC system. Uh, and then I've got this cute little guy here, which is a vacuum fluorescent display. It's 144 pixels across by 16 down, uh, and that's interfaced through an FTDI as well, the little breakout board that I've got here. Um, and basically, I've got two FFT uh, audio visualizers going. Um, so this is 144 bands, this is 16 bands, and I'm using uh, LabVIEW to play back the audio and both analyze it in real time. So it's kind of cool. Um, so I'll just give you a quick kind of far away view, and then I'll bring the camera in, and you can take a close look at the uh, visualizations that I came up with. Um, using a cheap USB sound card to get audio out of this uh, PXI chassis because it does not actually have a, PA or a, a sound card built in. Um, but it seems to work reasonably well. It might just be a little bit latent, but it's no big deal. Um, so, you know, I quick play, the music starts playing. I've got three waveform uh, graphs here on the top left. I've got the samples that I'm currently, um, I guess, performing an FFT on. The one underneath is actually the FFT unaltered. And then this is the scaled and um, kind of binned FFT. So basically what I've done is, um, this is, you know, the sampling rate divided by two bins. Um, so I have to scale that down. So for this display, which I'm currently demonstrating, it's 144 bins. So I'm taking an average um, to create 144 separate kind of slots and then, and then present them out on the display. And I can show you a little bit more about that in a second. So yeah, that one's pretty cool. It's, uh, you know, it's a very cool display. I'll uh, turn the music up a bit. Uh, one of the cool features I actually decided to include was uh, what I'm calling a band limit. So what I do is it's a percentage of the band that I wish to include on the display, uh, starting from the left. So right now it's showing only 40% of the band, but I can increase that, and you can see that uh, reflected. Um, you can see kind of towards the end point when you start to pass Nyquist frequency, you notice that it starts to trail off really quickly. There just isn't much data there. Um, so I thought the band limit feature would be cool to kind of put emphasis on the more interesting uh, sections of the waveform and people usually like to do the, the low frequency section so it allows you to do that, it's kind of cool. So give me a second here, I'll bring the camera in and I'll give you a demonstration real close of the actual display itself. Okay, so here we are a little bit more zoomed in, you can actually see the display. Um, so I'm just going to start the audio playback here and you can see it kind of going along with the music there. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool demonstration. Um, Basically, uh, the FTDI is really quite busy. It's a send-only protocol, so you just kind of set it and pray that it actually works. Um, this device has some handshaking. Um, if it's busy, it'll raise a line, which you can then strategically connect to the CTS input on your computer, which will cause the internal buffer to fill up rather than simply uh, just keep throwing bytes at it, even though it can't handle it. Um, and you can see it, it keeps up really, really well. Um, the processor on the uh, PXI chassis is a little weak. Um, it's only a Pentium M, I think, so it's a, you know, it's a 10-year-old computer. Um, so one of the things that helps boost performance is to disable anti-aliasing. It really, uh, really keeps things nice and fast. And yeah, you can see it's, uh, it's working fairly well. So now I'm going to give you a quick demo of the hardware that I designed, um, which is uh, just underneath this one. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the hardware that I designed. Um, this is a 16x16 16 16 LED display. On the back, you've got current uh, current limiting drivers for each of the LEDs, um, an AVR processor, and that Mega 1284P to handle the protocol communication with the host platform, and uh, shifting data out into these drivers, an FTDI USB to UART bridge, which is used to communicate with the host platform over USB, a JTAG debug port for the processor, and an external power connection. Um, this display, when all of the LEDs are lit, can consume an upwards of about two amps, so it's not something you want to connect to your internal uh, USB bus anytime soon, anyway. Um, so now I'll give you the demonstration that I gave earlier. I'll just start the music playback. As you can see, it's really eye-catching, really, really bright. Um, it's a pretty cool, lively um, visualization that really catches your eye. Now, uh, this is only running at 10% brightness, and I can scale that up all the way to 100% brightness. And as you can see, it's just insanely bright. Um, and that's the reason for the high current consumption of this display. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool uh, demonstration. So I'm going to try a different song now, just give you a little demonstration with something else.
Um, one of the things I'm doing in the uh, FFT visualization is uh, exponential averaging, three rounds, so you get that kind of a slow fall as the, uh, as the music changes abruptly. Uh, you never get a lot of flickering, essentially. And we can try one more song. And I'll dial the brightness back. So here's an interesting song. This is actually a chip tune, which has a lot of really interesting harmonics. And you'll see that immediately um, th through the high peaks on the FFT visualization. Kind of a cool effect. You can actually see the, the note patterns coming out in this display um, as it shifts from left to right according to the notes. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, the demonstration I've been working on for a little while now. Um, it's pretty cool. I haven't had time to do very many projects lately, so this has been a kind of a weekend one. Um, if you're curious, this PSI chassis, I've had it for about a year or so. I just haven't had time to actually play with it, and lately I've been really upgrading it. Um, I've got two scope cards, one 100 mega sample, one 20 mega sample. I've got a function generator that's capable of doing arbitrary waveforms up to 16 megahertz. Um, an MIO card, and I've got a power supply and a multimeter on the way. It's a really awesome piece of gear because everything fits in this one cabinet, and I can just take it wherever I need to do work, essentially. Um, so it's, it's been working out really, really well. Um, so I really hope you've enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.